Hi. Yes, hi. In the last segment, we were analyzing the entire book of Job with a view to what does it, what light does it shed upon our notions of inspiration, four different views of inspiration of the Bible, three of which are generally held by conservatives. Mm -hmm. Now we want to, we want to jump in where we get some help in, in decoding Job and trying to figure out what inspiration means in the book of Job from the comments of the Lord himself, because we mentioned there's eight voices in the book, maybe mm -hmm. nine if you count Eliphaz's right. spirit. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the book, God actually says what he thinks of several of the participants in the dialogue. Right. And it's Job 42. Verses 7 to 9. And it came about after Jehovah had spoken these words to Job, that Jehovah proceeded to say to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my anger has grown hot against you and your two companions. For you men have not spoken concerning me what is truthful, as has my servant Job. And now, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and you men must offer up a burnt sacrifice in your own, in your own behalf. And Job, my servant, will himself pray for you. His face only I shall accept, so as not to commit disgraceful folly with you. For you have not spoken concerning me what is truthful, as has my servant Job. Accordingly, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, went and did, just as Jehovah had spoken to them. And so Jehovah accepted Job's face. Hmm. First thing we note, the fourth companion of Job is missing. Mm -hmm. Elihu is not even mentioned here. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know what God's thoughts were on him. Well, we definitely know generally what God thought about the three companions. Mm -hmm. And it's negative. Yeah. He says, you have not spoken right or spoken truth concerning me. So what questions so, must come up right away yeah. when you think about what he's just judged? So g given our idea that the whole Bible is inspired, you'd have to ask, does this mean that everything they said was wrong, the three companions, and everything Job said was right? Mm. Uh, or, or was he just kind of talking generally, God talking generally about he was, mm. uh, you know, Job had it more correct than than yeah. his companions. Now, when you actually then take the microscope that we recommend people use in, for Bible study mm -hmm. and take it into the entire dialogue between the fourth friends, leaving Elihu aside, the fourth friends, and you realize there's a lot of overlap in the way they talk about God, the world, mm -hmm. their epistemology, and that word might be familiar to many of you now, their way of looking at how God can be read in the world, how you read reality, mm -hmm. involves the same four basic factors most of the time, right. which are... What, one is personal experience. Their personal experience. Uh, uh, tradition would be Tradition right. of the group experience, their, their ancestors, etc. Right. Nature. Yeah, yeah nature. Yeah, they, they do go to nature a lot. And judgment, because they... At, towards the end, that's what they seem to be thinking God is judging Job. Yeah. Uh, so the difference, that is, why God judges Job right and them wrong, seems to focus on this last element. That is, they take that God is just and that he's demanding justice of humankind and that you can read his justice. You know what, mm -hmm. you can know what God wants you to do. And even Job talks that way. Job talks that way too. And so does Elihu later. Right. But but their way of reading God's justice and mercy in the world is different than Job's, and, and even Elihu. Yeah, and their application to Job is uh, is where they run into difficulty. So the, taking the microscope to the dialogue, the most of the book of Job, you realize how difficult the process is here of sifting, because a lot of what they're saying overlaps each other and Job and Elihu. Yeah. And um, what's, what's the difference? Well, it's in their application of these truths about God and God's providence in the world to Job's situation. Mm -hmm. Is Job declared to be unrighteous by God because of what happens to him? Seems to be. Everything mm -hmm. seems to break upon that question. Yeah. Right. 
Now, I, I know when I, we've read this a lot of times, but when I've, I never could see a big difference in Elihu's comments uh, to his, to the other friends. And, and yet you mentioned one that now they, I think of it is probably right, that he may not have been saying God is judging you. He was trying to say God is correcting you. Yeah, that seems to be his emphasis, that the other three tend to go in the direction of what's happened to you is punitive. God is punishing you for right. something you have done mm -hmm. or an attitude you have or something your children have done. Right. And, and, then, and their viewpoint tends to go all the way to slander in many yeah. later in yeah. a later dialogue. Right. Whereas Elihu is more gracious, at least at the beginning, and tends to want to take the conversation in the direction of, you know, maybe God is just trying to teach you something. Mm -hmm. Well, these are all legitimate viewpoints, or, or guesses, you might say, given that they had so little information about a future life. Yeah, so they don't lean on what today's people might lean on, is, oh, well, uh, you know, the future, in the future it'll all be straightened out. Yeah, they, I don't, yeah. they don't have that option. No. Even though Job, at certain points, like in 14 and 19, it's seems to lean towards and, hope. Yeah. But, but they have no certainty here. Yeah, there's no clear revelation given yet Yeah. about this. So when you talk about the four means that they had in their general epistemology, that is uh, nature, uh, tradition, experience. their own personal experience, and God's judgments in the world to judge by that. Mm -hmm. But the fifth one is obviously revelation. Now Eliphaz is the only one who of the five, of the five who says, I got something from the spirit realm. Right. But we don't know to what extent Job and his companions had received, through the tradition, the actual teachings of God. We don't know anything about that, mm. as, just as we don't with Abraham and the patriarchs, other than what we're told in Scripture. Mm -hmm. How much of a primeval, primeval revelation was actually retained by this part of the, the, the human family? We don't have any information. Mm -hmm. We kind of, we have a few glimp glimpses in the book of of references to God's commandments and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Just as we do in Genesis. Mm -hmm. but, but no information. But no details, right. So when you get to these kind of questions about the epistemology of Job and his friends, and then you have God saying, well, they have not spoken what is right about me, then you see God's grace even in that, and not only in the way he's willing to forgive these men their mm -hmm. inappropriate uh, advice and their their false comfort to Job. He's willing to forgive that, but even in the way he judges, what is it about Job's comments that is right? Mm -hmm. Well, it well he's spoken the truth about himself and his theology, as it were, as similar as it is to his friends about God and his attributes, mm -hmm. is right too. But their error seems to focus more upon their slanderous um, reading God's attributes into into Job's life situation. Right. Yeah. So because he's he's having the experience and he knows that he's been righteous, he's coming to a different conclusion than them. Yeah. And they're not allowing for that. Yeah. Now I I think all of this underlines the need for us to be. If we, are, if we think of ourselves as in category three of conservatives, those who are seeing the nuances in Scripture in our, and having to incorporate those nuances into our view of what inspiration means, then, mm -hmm. then we see the, the permanent value of what Christ said about loving the Lord your God with your entire soul and mind. Mm -hmm. There's no shortcut to these truths. We can't, we can't download them, as it were, you need from your, above. We need our whole mind. <laughs> We need to, to deal with. We this. need our whole noggin, <laughs> and we need everybody else's noggins. Yes. So in the next segment, we'll talk about the the role of community mm. in our view of inspiration and how God guides us. Okay.